Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Roman and I'm a medical oncologist and today I'd like to go over tumor markers also known as cancer markers. Now these are simple blood tests that we perform that help provide care for a patient and there's a lot of confusion about this. I get asked questions on this all the time so let's get into this. So remember, I am not your doctor. I do not know the specific details of your case, so I am not providing any medical advice. This is for educational purposes only. So the tumor markers that I'd like to go over are the CEA, the CA125, the CA153, the CA2729, the CA99, the PSA, alpha fetoprotein and beta HCG. So we're gonna go over these one by one. So the first thing I wanna tell you is that none of these blood tests are specific to a cancer. And let me give you some examples. I have patients that I know have cancer. I know the type of cancer that they have, but yet their tumor markers are completely normal. On the other side, I have patients that I don't think have cancer. I have followed them for a long time. As an oncologist, the reason they're sending them to me is because one of these tumor markers is elevated. But yet, one year, two years, three years have gone by, I'm doing all sorts of testing and I do not find cancer. So what this tells us is that none of these blood tests are 100% uh, accurate or specific for cancer. So with that being said, let's start off with the CEA. Now the CEA stands for carcinoembryonic antigen. Keeping it simple, this is a very easy blood test. You can also check for this in other body fluids, but for simplicity, we'll keep it to a blood test. Um, normal people have, or when you do blood tests, you normally have a small amount of CEA. Now. If you have cancer, specifically an adenocarcinoma, a lot of times your CEA will go up. Not always, remember, none of these are 100% accurate. But a lot of times, if you have an adenocarcinoma, for example, lung cancer, breast cancer, gastric cancer, pancreas cancer, prostate cancer, anywhere where you can have an adenocarcinoma, your CEA may go up. Now, the important thing here is that smokers can have a slightly higher amount of CEA compared to non-smokers. So think about that. Cigarette smoking increases a cancer marker in your blood. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be reason enough for me to quit. But the way that I use a CEA is in patients who've had one of these uh, adenocarcinomas, for example, colon cancer is the main one, but for lung cancer, sometimes if you have the adenocarcinoma type, and especially if when you were first diagnosed with cancer, your CEA level was high, sometimes we use this test to follow through time because if, for example, you had colon cancer and it was removed and your CEA level returned to normal and we see that six months down the line or a year down the line, your CEA level starts to come up, then we start thinking, could your cancer have returned? So it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy, cheap blood test that we do that can help guide us. The other way I use it, just as any of these tumor markers, is once we start, let's say you have metastatic disease and your CEA level is elevated, then when I give you treatment, if you, the amount of tumor in your body is coming down, I would expect your CEA level to improve. So if it starts going up, it usually implies that your cancer is coming back or it's growing or maybe you have cancer. And if it's coming down, it may mean that the cancer was removed surgically or you're responding to chemotherapy or immunotherapy, whatever treatment you're being given. So it's a simple test that helps guide us. Again, it's not 100% specific. It's like I've said, I've seen it go up and down in patients that I cannot find cancer. So if your blood test is elevated, any one of these, you might not have cancer. So you always need to keep that in mind. Um, the CA125 is the same thing as the CEA. It's a blood test. And usually we follow these in patients who've had ovarian cancer, number one, or endometrial or uterine cancer. We can also see it in cancers of the fallopian tubes and cancers of the abdominal cavity. So a lot of cancers can give this, but we mainly use 
the CA125 for ovarian and for endometrial. And the same thing, just because it's high does not mean you have cancer. We use it to help us determine if you might have cancer and are you responding to treatment. So if it's high, we start you on chemotherapy and it comes down, it lets us know that most likely you're responding to treatment. The CA-15-3 is mainly used for breast cancer. We do not routinely send this test on breast cancer patients, although sometimes I do, especially on high-risk patients or patients who have metastatic disease and their levels are high. And if I start you on treatment and I see that the CA-15-3 is coming down, it usually implies that you're responding to treatment. The same thing with your CA-2729. This is also mainly used for breast cancer and all the uh, previously mentioned uh, uses applies to this one as well. So remember thus far CEA, anywhere you have adenocarcinoma, breast cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's too many to name. So um, smoking can increase the CEA and uh, you know, you, you gotta be careful because I get asked questions. I've had patients with some of these tumor markers that are 10 times the, the, the upper limit of normal. And when I follow some of these patients, for whatever reason, they start coming down on their own and I don't find cancer. It, it's something that's just very mysterious. Uh, the same thing with patients who have cancer. I've seen some of these tumor markers just uh, are, they, they do not increase. So go figure. CA-199, the same thing. Uh, not specific, but it's usually used for pancreas cancer or, pan or cancer of the biliary tree. So gallbladder cancer, cancer of the uh, biliary vessels, you know, cholangiocarcinoma, any one of these biliary tract cancers or pancreas cancer, CA-199. The PSA blood test, us men, we have a prostate. Prostate cancer is very common. So PSA is a pretty useful screening tool. It's usually started around the age of 40, but again, see your physician to see what they recommend for your specific case. If you have a strong family history, it may change uh, the time that we, or the age that we perform some of these tests. Just know that not all prostate cancers produce PSA, and, uh, but most of them do. And if you have prostate cancer and we start you on treatment, the PSA will start to come down. If you've had radiation treatment or you had surgery and your prostate was removed, the PSA a lot of times goes down to zero. And if you start noticing that it's creeping back up, it usually means that the prostate cancer is coming back. Alpha fetoprotein is mainly for cancer of the liver, what we call a hepatoma or hepatocellular carcinoma. That's a specific type of liver cancer or germ cell tumors, for example, some cancers of the testicles or ovaries. Uh, not specific, but it's a very good test. Alpha fetoprotein in liver cancer is very important because if you have this type of liver cancer and an imaging test, for example, a CAT scan or an MRI suggests that it's this type of cancer and your alpha fetoprotein is very high a lot of times we don't even have to do a biopsy, even though we usually encourage it, but a very high alpha fetoprotein with imaging tests, MRI or CAT scan, that suggests it is this specific type of liver cancer, we, you, we might not have to do a liver biopsy. And again, as we put you on treatment, we expect that tumor marker to come down. And last but not least is beta HCG. That's right, the pregnancy marker. Some tumors can elevate beta HCG. This is mainly for some type of uh, uh, what we call germ cell tumors of the um, testicles or the ovaries. Uh, so, you know, we, we follow these blood tests. If they're very high, it might imply that you may have one of these. Make sure you're not pregnant. Make sure you don't have an ectopic pregnancy because that, you know, pregnancy is the most common cause. But sometimes I've ordered this, this blood test in a guy and I'll get a phone call from the lab. Hey, what are you doing a pregnancy test on a, on a male for. And I tell them, listen, tumors or cancer can also produce this. So just keep that in mind. So once again, I'm going to go over them. CEA, very nonspecific adenocarcinoma, CA125, ovarian and endometrial, CA153, breast, CA2729, breast, although it can be seen in other tumor types, CA199, gallbladder, biliary tree or biliary vessels, 
and pancreas, PSAs for the prostate, alpha fetal protein, hepatoma or liver cancer, um, and some germ cell tumors, and beta ACG germ cell tumors, again, like the ovary or the testicles. So that's it. I hope that this helps you out. You know, I'm a physician, I'm seeing patients. I don't have time for all the fancy editing. I do this on my off time. I get home, I'm tired, but I take enjoyment in helping you out. I like educating people. So if you have a specific question, please comment below. I will do my best to answer it for you. I'm gonna come out with a bunch of content, everything related to cancer and blood disorders like anemia. So if this interests you, please subscribe and thank you for your attention.